I was going guys try back again here to bring you another video this video is going to be doing my monthly review for the Walking Dead issue 106 which just hit stands today okay so as usual this review will contain spoilers so if you haven't read the issue yet um, be wary of that uh, I will go through a plot uh, analysis uh, summary, so to speak, so that we can uh, analyze everything and talk about it. Uh, overall, this was a great issue, a really great issue, um, especially the ending, which is a crazy cliffhanger. Probably one of the most exciting cliffhangers I can remember for The Walking Dead for a while. Uh, but let's get to that. Let's start it from the top. Okay, so we begin the issue off picking up a 105 left off with Carl still missing from Rick's point of view. I like the way in this issue uh, Robert Kirkman has you know the two points of view where we at the beginning get to see what happens with Negan like in the last couple issues and then we show Rick afterwards and he has no idea where Carl is. You know, He doesn't know anything about it so it's kind of neat to see the two different points of view and uh, sort of to encounter both groups and where they're at. So at the beginning we see Negan's group, uh, we see the rest of Mark and what's happened to him after Negan has quote unquote done his punishment thing to him, burning his face or whatever. Brutal. Uh, Dwight's pissed off because obviously as we can tell that same thing happened to him probably some point earlier on in the zombie apocalypse or maybe a few months back or so. That type of thing I'm sure we can assume. Um, and if you guys don't remember him, he's the one with the crossbow and has, you know, two face type thing going on. Now Mark will too, and we get to see why. Um, of course, we still have Carl there, who is in Negan's care, so to speak, whatever <laughs> if you want to say that. Uh, and he's kind of some cool, additional cool scenes between him and Negan, kind of discussing what they're going to do. Uh, Carl asking to put the rat back over top of his uh, his face, the uh, the eye there. Negan saying, "No, you can't. Um, <laughs> you most absolutely effing cannot." Uh, and essentially letting us know as the reader and also um, telling Carl that he doesn't really know what he's going to do with him at this point yet. So we still have to wait and see what's going to happen with Carl and um, sets us up for a really exciting cliffhanger at the end. Um, okay, so that's what happens at Negan's spot. Now we cut over to um, what's happening with uh, Rick. So we finally get to see uh, Rick and the group again after not seeing them for a few issues which is, I think, the first time for a while they've done that. Um, before that, you know, we only had, like, break issues like that with uh, the governor and his point of view. And until now, we haven't had anybody else who's had their, you know, point of view shown in the comic book. It's always been from Rick's side, uh, which I think is interesting, too, because it's kind of cool to see both sides and what's happening, you know, between uh, the good guy and the bad guy, so to speak. Uh, it works really well. It's something that should probably always be done pretty much when you're dealing with that kind of story. Similar to how... For example, I always use the Dark Knight as an example because it's my favorite movie ever, but you have, you know, you get to see Batman's point of view and you get to see the Joker's point of view and what he's doing for a lot of it. It makes it really exciting when they finally collide and things come together. Okay, so then um, Rick and the group are fighting off some walkers with a beautiful splash page, uh, one of Charlie Adler's best splash pages, I think, in a long time. Um, you have them sort of all like fighting across it. It's just beautiful. And uh, you have Rick who's telling Andrea and them that we're not going back yet. Not, and then Andrew's saying, Rick, you know, this is getting dangerous. We should pull back. Somebody could get hurt, bitten or something. And he's basically saying no. And like a uh, badass mf -er, he's shooting down, killing all the zombies, walking up, shooting them, and then kind of like sitting there like, you know, you know the look Charlie Adder puts on his face, kind of like, you know, I'm just badass. Something like that. Anyway, so that happens, and then um, they go back because it's getting dark. They don't get there before dark. Uh, they arrive, and um, you know Rick's disappointed, as always, because he hasn't found Carl yet, but he's not giving up the search. And they go back inside, and then Jesus shows up. Uh, also, the point when they were gone, there was a little scene with uh, Spencer, who, if you guys remember from the Alexandria community, is uh, the son to, uh, was it Douglas? I think it was Douglas uh, and his wife who was killed uh, earlier on in the, sh in the series, if you guys remember. Uh, and he's kind of in limbo now and kind of depressed, which I imagine you would be in his situation, plus jealous uh, of Rick at the same time because Rick is uh, with Andrea now. Um, so, you know, he obviously, you know, likes her. So he's jealous of that. And plus he's got the situation with uh, him being alone because of his family. So, you know, maybe setting something up there in the future for him to, you know, uh, mutiny, act up, do something. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Should be exciting. Or maybe leave. 
Uh, and also random lady who I don't remember seeing ever before, except for maybe at that little greeting that they had when they first joined Alexandria with all the people getting together. She obviously looks more like a librarian than she does somebody that would do well in a, a zombie apocalypse. You know, he's got the glasses and the hair and everything. Old lady hair, old woman hair. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and then, so that's that's cool. We're going to see more of that later, I'm sure. Um, so that's a good setup right there. Jesus comes back and he tells Rick that um, essentially he's found Negan, knows where he is, and that uh, they, they should go check it out. And uh, Rick can't wait. He won't wait until morning, gets everybody together, and heads out on the road. Got Michonne, uh, Jesus, Andrea, him, I think that's it, maybe one other person, I forget, uh, with him. And he drives along the road, and then all of a sudden, Andrew's talking. They're deciding what they're going to do when they get there. Rick's going to say that, you know, we'll probably just knock, because if we try to fight against him, first of all, they don't know where Carl is. There's too many men. And Negan's a tough dude to begin with, so it's not going to be easy for him to just waltz in there and blow shit up and, and, and get Carl out of there. There's too many guys, there's too much, it's too fortified. You know, Jesus tells him about that killing field thing he has where he, he leaves the walkers in front of the wall, but he puts them like, like you know, into the ground with, uh, you know, different things or ties them to things like cars and different debris and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Uh, if you, remember, you guys remember seeing that in the last uh, couple episodes. Um so there's that, and then Andrea gets surprised, and we see Negan's big military uh, truck thing with all the guys inside, and uh, they, you know, come out, and then Negan tells them that, uh, yeah, I can't effing wait until you see what I've done to your little boy. <laughs> so that was just really cool, man, because we as the reader don't know either, so that's why it's really exciting and really a good cliffhanger for us, because we have no idea what he's done to him either, and he was talking about you know, punishing him before for what he did and all the men he killed. <coughs> so we'll see what happens with that. Um, then at, at the end, of course, uh, we see the cover for next week, and it says, don't miss, or, or next month, don't miss next month's issue, February. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to miss it. Come on. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely one of the most exciting cliffhangers we had for a while. So let's start the speculation now. Maybe I'll do a video just dedicated to this and the different possibilities that could happen to Carl. What do you guys think has happened to Carl? What do you think uh, Negan has done? Um, me personally, I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to say that I think he's probably going to make him cross-dress. I think so. I was thinking about it. And I was like, okay, what could he do here? He could kill him. He could have a zombie bite him. He could, um, you know, do, do some kind of physical, you know, burning or something, you know, like he did to the other guys. Um, tattoo him or something. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of hard to say. I think he's going to make him cross-dress. My opinion. Anyway, we'll maybe do a video I'll, I'll dedicate to that coming up. Since I'm kind of short on topics anyway. Anyway, I thought it was a great issue. I'm going to give it a perfect 10 out of 10 because it, uh, it does what The Walking Dead does best. It keeps you reading. It keeps you interested. It keeps you looking forward to the next issue. And that is something that a lot of comic books these days do not have. I mean, they could be great on their own, but I don't really feel a lot of times when I read a comic book nowadays, whether it be Batman, X-Men, you know, any of these types of titles, the big events, like um, the, last, the last big event in comic books I was really excited for was... Um, uh, Blackest Night uh, from Green Lantern. X-Men versus um, Avengers was not that good, in my opinion. Um, I mean, there, Siege was good. Siege was really good. But what I'm saying, basically, is that in terms of comic books right now and in the last couple of years, I have not felt another comic book series uh, is doing what The Walking Dead does, where you read an issue and then you just can't wait to read the next one because it's that, it's that good. It's that well-written. Um, so definitely other uh, writers, should, I think, for comic books should definitely... Um, you know, maybe get influenced a little bit by what uh, Robert Kirkman's doing and step their game up a bit because um, I really don't feel like, you know, grabbed by the book and that I will can't wait to, to read the next issue like I do every month with The Walking Dead, especially especially this month. I was listening to um, Why Oak by Civilian while reading this. Epic, epic. Perfect issue. Loved it. Can't wait till uh, next month. Let me know what you guys thought about the issue and what do you think Negan is going to do with Carl? Travis says cross-dressing. Later, guys. Peace.